My friends, welcome to the Word Exposed. Join me in contemplating the Lord present in the Holy Scriptures today, the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Jesus, Son of David, have pity on me. Bartimaeus cries out to Jesus in today's Gospel. He wants to see, having been a blind beggar living by the roadside for years. The Lord hears him even though people have been trying to silence him. Go your way. Your faith has saved you. So says the Lord to Bartimaeus, who regains his sight. This scene is important because Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. And the profession of faith of Bartimaeus by addressing Jesus as the son of David is an anticipation of what would happen later on the triumphant entrance of Jesus to Jerusalem that would culminate in His passion, death, and resurrection. The name Son of David is almost synonymous with Messiah, for they believe that the anointed liberator or Savior shall come from the house of David. The blind man sees Jesus with the eyes of faith. <laughs> According to Jesus, the Holy Spirit will not invent new truth. The Holy Spirit will lead us to the truth that Jesus has already taught. When you have the Holy Spirit, you can speak and explore different languages to address people of different needs. Barriers and boundaries of discrimination, division, and injustice should disappear. The diversity of the gifts should not be a hindrance to the strengthening of the church. God chooses all. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Shout with joy for Jacob, exult at the head of the nations, proclaim your praise and say, The Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them back from the land of the north. I will gather them from the ends of the world, with the blind and the lame in their midst, the mothers and those with child. They shall return as an immense throng, they departed in tears, but I will console them and guide them. I will lead them to brooks of water on a level road so that none shall stumble. For I am a father to Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn. The Word of the Lord. Our first reading for this Sunday is taken from the prophet Jeremiah. Let us reflect on God restoring our sight, our capacity to see. But it is a restoration to true seeing. God makes us truly see. Jeremiah presents a beautiful image of the people Israel being restored to the dignity of being God's people. How? They will be returning to their home thanks to God who will guide them. They had been banished, sent on exile because of their sin. You know, brothers and sisters, sinfulness is a form of blindness. We have to admit that. And the experience of Israel is a mirror against which we could see our own sinfulness in the form of blindness. The blindness of forgetfulness of God and God's good actions, liberating actions on our behalf. 
the blindness caused by our self-preoccupation. Just like Israel, when Israel started becoming, in a way, self-sufficient, they became blind. They did not see God, but they did not see also their true selves. They forgot who they truly were and where they came from. Sinfulness blinded Israel, not only to the true God and to their, to their true selves, but they became blind also to the dignity of other people. That's why there was a lot of injustice, corruption. False gods were worshipped. God had to deal with a blind people. The blindness that led them nowhere sinfulness as blindness made them lose their direction until they found themselves as exiles. But God is good. God will restore them to sight. God will lead them to a new exodus. Will make them remember. Will make them see God again. And you have this image of a people marching joyfully led by a patient God who does not get tired of opening their eyes, opening their hearts, reminding them. And you have images of hope, mothers and their children, oh, new life, walking back home. And in their midst, you have the blind, you have the lame, people who have lost a sense of direction and could not see the direction. The blind, they will walk too. And the lame, who could not take the first steps, they will be able to move on, thanks to God. We have a God who opens the eyes of the blind so that they can return home, home to Him, home to each other, home to their true identity. We have a God who makes us see. It has been a while now since we started this program in 2008. From day one, you have been with us, our dear friends, assisting us with open hands. We are inviting you once again to be our partners in this ministry. Following the mandate of the Lord to bring the good news to all, we can continue to broadcast and reach more people with your support, bringing the good news to them through television and the internet. Friends, your offering would be very much appreciated. Thank you. May the Lord reward you a hundredfold. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made the representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifice for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness. And so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The Word of the Lord. Our second reading is taken from the letter to the Hebrews. The theme that we have been developing is how God makes us see, truly see, how God cures our blindness. 
In the first reading from Jeremiah, the people Israel, through their sinfulness and infidelity, became blind. The type of blindness that is forgetfulness, forgetfulness of God and the, the marvels that God has done for them, forgetfulness of their own identity and their past, forgetfulness of neighbors, thereby becoming unjust and corrupt. But God is good. God leads them home, leads the blind and the lame home, opening their eyes again to their true home, God, themselves, and their mission to love one another. God will lead them home by opening their eyes. In the second reading, we have a beautiful description of the high priest. The high priest, like Aaron, who is taken from human beings, from brothers and sisters. And because they know the human condition, they should be compassionate to their brothers and sisters. Their elevated position should not blind them to their own faults. In fact, their elevated position should open their eyes more to their belongingness to brothers and sisters who, like themselves, high priests, are weak and sinners. That's why the letter to the Hebrews reminds us that no high priest becomes a high priest by getting the honor for oneself. It is grace. It is God's appointment. Even Jesus, the eternal high priest, did not get that honor of being high priest. He did not claim it for himself. It is God who called him, the Father who called him his son, and gave them the honor, which is really a mission, to be a compassionate high priest. First, by sending him as a human being to experience the human condition. But it is not an honor that one attributes to oneself. It is given as a grace, and it is given as a position of compassion and solidarity. My dear brothers and sisters, this is one blindness that the world is suffering from. We are enamored of honor and we honor ourselves. <laughs> and that is a form of blindness and it makes us blind. People do not see the sufferings of other people. And so, we put ourselves above the others. We cannot wait to be honored. We pay even to be honored. We pay people to put us into positions. And when we are in positions, we are blinded by honor and prestige. And we do not serve. That's not the high priest that we have. The high priest that we have is not blind. Not blind to God and not blind to neighbors. We pray that God may heal the blindness of the hungry people. People are hungry for honor, position, and prestige. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Mark As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. 
but he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up, Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord Our Gospel for this Sunday is taken from St. Mark. We have been developing the theme of how God heals our blindness and restores us to true sight. In the first reading from Jeremiah, we see the blindness called sinfulness. Sinfulness blinded Israel. They forgot the true God and God's miraculous interventions in their lives. And then they forgot who they really were. They got enamored of their success and forgot that they used to be humble, nomadic people, and even slaves. Then they got blinded by their own stature, their own status as God's people. They became blind to the needs of the poor, and so corruption pride entered. But God is good. God restores them to sight. They will be brought home. But it is not just a physical home. It is not just a return to Jerusalem, to Israel. They will return home to the true God, to their true identity, and to love of neighbor. In the second reading from the letter to the Hebrews, we have another form of blindness, honor. But the high priest, especially Jesus, did not get the honor of being high priest for themselves. It is a gift of God. When honor, it becomes an obsession. It is a form of blindness. It will make the person with the position less empathetic, less understanding, less compassionate to the people that they will serve. So it is good to be reminded that the high priest, and for that matter, people with authority and responsibility, you have received a grace, a gift of God. It is a calling. So do not be blinded by your position. That is the end of service. In the gospel, we have Bartimaeus, meaning the son of Timaeus, a blind man, a beggar, shouting to Jesus, the son of David, to heal his blindness. Just that, just that portion already tells us that this blind man, the son of Timaeus, is capable of seeing. He referred to Jesus as the son of David, meaning he, unlike the scribes and Pharisees and the priests of that time, he saw who Jesus was and attributes to Jesus a messianic huh, title. He already saw in his blindness huh, of the eyes, but he saw with another eye the true identity of Jesus. He was proclaiming Jesus as the Messiah. And as the Messiah promised by the prophets of old, including Jeremiah in the first reading, he could heal blind people. He, as the Messiah, could guide the blind back home. And so, 
This is interesting, an interesting datum from the gospel. The blind man confessing with the eyes of faith that Jesus was the Messiah and in him the prophecies will be fulfilled. And Jesus granted his request by saying, Your faith has healed you. He recognized a form of sight that is called faith. And that faith has restored this person to physical sight. My dear brothers and sisters, it is not just medical intervention that makes us see. We are restored to double sight by faith. The capacity to see and penetrate the truth about God, that is only by faith, by the eyes of faith. And God willing, by faith, even the physical uh, sickness could be cured. Not all the time, but in faith, we know some blind people have been restored to sight. But by faith, ah, uh, they could see clearly with, the, with their heart, with the wisdom that those who have no faith could not possess and see. But look at the ending of the story. Having now seen Jesus with the eyes, the physical eyes that have been restored and healed, this blind man follows Jesus. This is the fruit of seeing Jesus. Follow Him. Walk with Him. Work with Him. Be one of His laborers. That is the height of sight. So my dear brothers and sisters, we ask the Lord to heal the many forms of blindness in the world. Blindness caused by materialism, consumerism, by lack of forgiveness and compassion, by self-preoccupation, this greed for honor and prestige. And when we have been healed of this blindness, we follow Jesus. I want to pay tribute to the many women and men who are suffering from physical blindness, their impairment of sight. Many of them have been very good examples of true sight in faith and love and the true sight of following Jesus. I have celebrated Masses where the reader were blind people, and I tell you, with the braille and the sensitivity of their fingers and their hands, they could see the Word of God and they lead us to hearing the Word of God with their sincere and unadulterated proclamation of the Word of God. I know many people among the blind, our brothers and sisters, who work hard learning new crafts, learning how to be, to do massage work and clinical therapist, the blind who played uh, in the rondalias, the local symphonies, those who sing to earn decent living to support their families and send their children to school. We pray for them, and if it is God's will that they may be able to see again, we praise the Lord. But we already praise God because they are making us see what human life is all about and what discipleship is all about. The Word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.
It has been a while now since we started this program in 2008. From day one, you have been with us, our dear friends, assisting us with open hands. We are inviting you once again to be our partners in this ministry. Following the mandate of the Lord to bring the good news to all, we can continue to broadcast and reach more people with your support, bringing the good news to them through television and the internet. Friends, your offering would be very much appreciated. Thank you. May the Lord reward you a hundredfold. Friends, today we will continue our series on our Blessed Mother. Let us reflect today on Mary's being our mother who always accompanies us and leads us to her son Jesus. Pope Leo XIII declared the month of October as the month of the Holy Rosary. Saint Dominic de Guzman is credited for making this devotion to Our Lady popular. It is said that with the help of the Rosary, he was able to defeat the Albigensians. The efficacy of this prayer is also underlined by the triumph of Christians against the Turks during the Battle of Lepanto. Locally, the victory of the Spanish and Filipino troops against the Dutch during the Battle of La Naval de Manila is credited to the intercession of Our Lady. And this is commemorated today as we celebrate the Feast of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary, La Naval de Manila. Such instances depict for us a portrait of Mary as protector of her children. Our mother reminds us that she is with us in our many battles or struggles in life. In the scripture, Jesus entrusted Mary to his beloved disciple, John, who represented all of us. On the cross, the Lord said, Woman, here is your son. Son, here is your mother. From then on, they lived as a family. She became mother to the disciples of Jesus and waited with them for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Mary, as our mother, is also a recurring theme in her apparitions. Who would not be comforted by the words of Our Lady of Guadalupe to the lowly Juan Diego? Don't be afraid. Am I not your mother? Together with this assurance is her plea to pray the rosary, which at Fatima, Our Lady repeatedly told her seers, Lucia, Jacinta, and Francesco. Pope Benedict XVI once taught us, when reciting the rosary, the important and meaningful moments of salvation history are relived. Friends, when the Blessed Mother tells us to pray the rosary, she is inviting us to contemplate the life of Jesus with her. Mary never leads us to herself, but always towards Jesus. She desires that we get to know Jesus, our brother and Lord, more intimately. This is all for now, brothers and sisters. May we not forget to turn to Our Lady, especially through the Rosary, for she will accompany us to Jesus. Here are some points for your reflection. The first point is, 
what are the forms of blindness in our contemporary culture? Ano ang mga uri ng pagkabulag sa ating kultura ngayon? The second point is, how has faith made you see the meaning of life? Paano ka natulungan ng pananampalataya para makita ang kahulugan ng buhay? O oh God, you created everything through your word. As we contemplate you in the scriptures proclaimed and heard today, renew us as your children and as brothers and sisters to one another. Amen. My friends, thank you for joining me this morning. May the Lord present in the scriptures make your heart burn for love of Him and move you to love others. Until next Sunday, only here on The Word Exposed.